Good morning, teachers and fellow students. I'd like to thank you for coming to my speech today. I'm sure you have all heard the famous saying, count your blessings. To be honest, I'm not quite positive who actually said this quote, but I know my parents have been saying it since as long as I can remember. When I think about what counting your blessings mean, I think about gratitude. To me, I think that gratitude means being thankful and not taking things for granted. I think it's safe to say that we often forget to be thankful in our everyday lives. I can say that this is true for me. Growing up, I was a very happy kid. I was always laughing, and people would always tell me they loved my smile. My mom would always say, when you don't feel great, just flash your beautiful smile, and it will make you and others around you feel better. It wasn't until grade six when I realized, as silly as it sounds, how much I took smiling for granted. I was in my TV room watching American Idol and eating my dinner in front of my television when I first felt it. I began to giggle at something funny that Simon Cowell said when I felt that I physically couldn't smile. I ran to my kitchen and asked my mom if she noticed anything weird. I clearly remember the look of shock in her face. The next thing I knew, we were at the emergency room. It wasn't until a couple hours later, and after different tests, when the doctor told my parents and I that I was diagnosed with Bell's palsy. In case you don't know what Bell's palsy is, it is caused by a virus that makes nerves in your face become severely weak, therefore paralyzing your facial muscles on one side. I was immediately booked to see a specialist the following day. I remember being afraid to look in a mirror and see myself. When I finally got the courage to look at my reflection, I was disgusted. I was ugly. I started to bawl. My whole left side of my face drooped when I tried to smile. There's no specific treatment for Bell's palsy other than allowing time for your nerve to heal. I was given no guarantees how long it would last or if I would ever heal completely. I did acupuncture and facial exercises almost every day to try and regain strength in my left side. I didn't go to school for a month. I was too embarrassed to be seen by anyone other than my family. When I finally went back to school, it was hard for me. I didn't know how mean kids really could be until then. Most people didn't say much to me, but I could tell they were always looking. I tried to just ignore their stares. It wasn't until one day I was in the playground when one girl called me out in front of everyone and said, Smile, Talia. I was so humiliated. I remember going home that day and screaming in my room, Why me? I remember telling my mom that I did not want to go to Appleby the next year looking how I did. Thankfully, over the course of the year, I recovered pretty well from Bell's palsy. I know I'm not fully recovered and probably will never be, but I am so grateful that I have come this far. When I look back, I am also grateful for my family who stood by me. My parents taught me, as cliche as it sounds, that regardless of your physical appearance, beauty comes from the inside. At first, I didn't believe them. I still spent my time feeling bad for myself and crying myself to sleep. I just wanted a normal smile. It wasn't until one day when I had an appointment at Sick Kids Hospital where I finally realized how lucky I was. Apart from having Bell's palsy, I was a healthy kid. When I got to Sick Kids, I took one look around the room. There were kids around me who were severely ill, in wheelchairs, and yet, they were still smiling. I instantly felt gu guilty for pitying myself. From that day on, I was grateful. I learned to accept my crooked smile and lazy eye. I also learned to accept people noticing it and pointing it out. But I no longer felt embarrassed. I felt proud. Proud that I finally learned that my smile was just as beautiful as anyone else's. The summer flew by and I was starting middle one at Appleby. I met so many amazing people who supported and continue to support me through all the challenges of my life. I can truly say 
that I am so grateful for my amazing friends. I don't know what I would do without you all. You guys always know how to make me laugh, even when I felt like I couldn't. You guys have always stood by me since day one, especially through my senior one year where I faced the most difficult time of my life. As some of you may know, in the beginning of my grade 11 year, I was living in Madrid, Spain. I planned to spend a year there while completing my grade 11 credits online and studying Spanish. I would then return to Appleby the following September for my senior year. At the time, I felt that my life couldn't get any better. I was away from my parents, living in Europe, and making new friends. It wasn't until one day that I got a call from home. I picked up the phone to hear the shocking news that my mom had been in the hospital for two days. It never even crossed my mind that it could be anything serious. I mean, it was my mom. I thought she'd be back to her routine in no time. The doctors were running tests on her to see what was wrong. Needless to say, I was on a plane back home immediately. It wasn't until a few days after I was home when my family and I found out that my mom had been diagnosed with a very large cancerous tumor that was attached to her liver, stomach, lungs, spleen, and pancreas. My heart completely dropped when I heard this news. If you know me, you know that my mom and I are extremely close. She's my best friend. She's the first one I go to when something good happens in my life, and she is definitely the first one I go to when I need someone to lean on. It is so hard to accept when cancer strikes someone you love so much. I found myself saying, why me again? All I could think about was how I might lose my best friend. I knew Appleby was always very supportive, but I never understood what community meant until Appleby heard the news about my mom. My family and I were so grateful that Mrs. Sampson had graciously offered to let me enroll back into the school so that I could finish my grade 11 year while being at home and being able to be surrounded by my family and friends. I am so grateful for Appleby. Ever since I came back last January, I've been surrounded by love and support from the students and amazing faculty. My mom had a surgery to have her tumor removed, and although the margins were clear, this rare type of cancer wasn't completely gone. Even though the operation was a success, the doctors told us the outlook wasn't good. Instead of losing hope, my mom did some research and found a hospital in San Diego. There they offered different types of treatment other than chemotherapy. My mom would have not been able to afford this treatment if her sister and friends at Appleby hadn't organized a fundraiser to send her to the hospital in California. From the day the fundraiser started, alumni, parents, current and students, faculty and friends donated to my mom. It was a miracle that in one day there were enough donations from my mother to go to San Diego. My family and I were overwhelmed with the amount of love and support that was given to us. My mom and grandmother spent the day in tears each time they pressed the refresh button on the donation website. I can honestly say that speaking on behalf of my mom and myself, we have never been more grateful. Going through this time, a lot of people opened up to me about their experiences with cancer and how it affected their loved ones. Listening to these stories, I learned that it is unfair to say, why me? Because everyone is going through their own problems. Everyone has hardships and obstacles in their life, and through these, they too will learn the importance of gratitude. It shouldn't have taken such a life-changing offense for me to understand the importance of gratitude. It is important to sometimes take a step back and realize how lucky you are. It is so easy to take even the little things for granted. Even in the midst of difficulties, you can always find something to be grateful for. I am thankful, thankful for the privilege of attending Appleby College, boarding with my best friends, my health, my family, and my hero, my mom. I know that I will never take another day for granted. Thank you. Please rise and sing hymn 423.